Greetings yogis, welcome. Today we will be doing a floor series of shoulder openers. Um, there's about five or six different uh, postures in this uh, series. My name is Spencer, this is Amelia, she'll be our model today. So we're going to begin with child's pose. So in child's pose, you can do it one of two different ways. Your knees can be out wide or you can bring your knees together. Arms can come out long. I'm gonna prefer that you, uh, for our purposes today, have the knees out wide and the big toes touching one another. The hips are sitting on the heels. They're getting as close to the heels as possible. Your back is flat. Your arms are out long. And you should feel a nice good stretch in the shoulder joints. And we're gonna stay here for about 10 breaths. So just begin to settle in. So if you're sitting around a lot, if you're sitting at a desk, so much of our lives are spent in forward flexion of our upper body, shoulders coming forward for internal rotation or flexion. So this sequence today will be designed to bring the shoulders open, the chest open as well. We'll take five final breaths. Final two breaths. And release. We'll now move into puppy pose. So from child's pose, begin to lift the hips up, bring the knees closer to one another. Your knees are now hip width apart. Extend the arms out long. Begin to bring the chest towards the floor. The difference between puppy pose and child's pose. In puppy pose, your hips are up in the air. Your hips are over the knees. In child's pose, your hips are on your heels. This puts a lot more stress on that shoulder joint. Can you feel that? Yes. Yes, she said. Okay. Now, one day, maybe not today, maybe not next week, maybe not next year, maybe not 10 years from now, the chest might even get onto the floor. But if it's not there, Maybe you can get the nose onto the floor. Maybe you can get the chin onto the floor. Or you can have the forehead on the floor. But you should feel the shoulder joint opening. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint, just like the hip joint. And it moves in lots of different ways. Internal rotation, external rotation, flexion, extension. Right now in puppy pose, that shoulder joint is in full extension. We'll take five final breaths. Find comfort in the breath. If you're finding some discomfort in the posture, bring the breath to that area. Stay with the breath. Final two breaths. And release. Let's make our way into tabletop posture. We'll do a couple sets of cow-cat here because cow-cat also opens the shoulders. So in cow, we're going to inhale and drop our belly. And then for cat, we'll exhale, bring our chin to the chest, pressing into the palms. See the shoulder joints rotating. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And turn the tabletop. We're going to move into thread the needle. Right arm sweeps up tall. Gaze at your arm as it goes up. 
On your exhale, bring that right arm through the opening. You can come down onto that right shoulder. If your head does not make it to the floor, you can put a block under there. You can put a pillow, a blanket, whatever's most comfortable. Now her right arm is extending out long. What should she do with her left arm? Well, she can extend her left arm up tall. Okay? Right now her right shoulder is in internal rotation. Her left shoulder is neutral. Or if you're comfortable here, you can take that left arm and bind it around the back, touching the opposite side hip. And that actually takes the left shoulder into internal rotation as well. Extending that arm out long. So if you have the bind behind the back, you're actually in internal shoulder rotation on both sides. We'll take five final breaths here. Again, using your breath to settle in. I have the easy part. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> Final two breaths. Final breath. Now place the left palm in front of your nose. Press up in the left palm, that's the safe way to come up. Bring that right arm, sweep it back up to the ceiling and back down to tabletop. Take one set of cow-cat to reset the spine. And release. Left side. Inhale, left arm comes up tall. Exhale, sweep the left arm through. You're coming down onto that left shoulder, rotating that shoulder internally. Again, the head can come to the floor, or if you're more comfortable with a block or a pillow or a blanket underneath, feel free to go there. What to do with the right arm? Let's start by extending that right arm out long. That's neutral shoulder on the right side. Hips remain up tall. And then if you're comfortable here, you can take that right arm, bind it around the back, touching the left hip if possible. Now you have both right shoulder and left shoulder in internal shoulder rotation. And we'll stay here for another five breaths. Final two breaths. Bring the right palm in front of the nose. Press yourself up using that hand. Sweep the left arm up tall. Come back to tabletop. Take one set of cow cat to reset. release. All right, so we took our shoulder into internal rotation on both sides. We're now going to take it into external rotation. So before you do anything, I want to show you this one because it's hard to cue. Um, I don't even know what I call this, except I call it a prone shoulder external rotator. Prone means you're on your belly. So let's make our way to the belly. The arms come out to the side into a T. Okay. Right leg bends. You're going to take that right foot behind. The, the right foot comes behind the left knee. And then you're going to take that right arm and wrap it behind the back. So if you can see this, her bottom leg, in this case her left leg, is out long. Her right knee is bent, and her right ankle and right foot are right behind the left knee. Her left shoulder is in full external rotation. 
Now, if you can't get your hand behind your back, that's okay. You can just leave it here. Okay, if you have shoulder issues or just don't have that range of motion. Can you put it in front of you? To keep you can balance? put it in front of you if you want, but I prefer it to be off of the ground so that the weight is on here. But wherever your body is taking you is wherever your body is taking you. So the goal here is to get external rotation into this shoulder. If you have to come out of this posture, this is not the easiest posture. If you have to come out of it before I say so, feel free to do that. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Right arm comes back to a T. Legs come out long. You're back on your belly. And we'll move to the opposite side. Inhale. Left knee bends. Let's take the left foot behind the right knee, right arm out extending long. You can bring your left arm to your hip, or if you're comfortable, you can take that left arm behind the back. You can put something under your head here, should you choose as well, if you're not comfortable, if your neck is uncomfortable. But again, this posture is really designed for external rotation of the right shoulder. So our thread the needle was internal rotation. Our prone twist was external rotation. Puppy pose was full extension for five final breaths. Final breath here. And release. Left arm comes out long. Bring both legs to the floor. Arms to a T. Begin to press yourself up into a kneeling posture. And let's grab that. Shake it out, shake it out. Good, good, good. Now we're going to move into a tricep stretch. Um, so I'm going to ask you to sit here and face the office, face away from the camera. So if you have a strap, if you have a tie, if you have a towel, this would be a really good time to do that. Okay. So we're going to go into a tricep stretch. So you grab one hand. Let's start with the right side here. So your right arm comes up, your elbow is pointing towards the ceiling. Grab the strap with your left hand. Now some people can, can you, can you touch your fingers? Only on this side, but yeah. Hold on, let's get that hair out of the way. <laughs> I got it. All right, so some people can clasp their fingers together. I can't, I have a shoulder injury that reduces my range of motion, so I can't do that. If you can grab your fingers and lock your fingers, wonderful. But if you can't, that's where the strap comes in. So you can have the strap in one hand and the strap in the other and then pull your hands together. Elbow comes towards the ceiling. Elbow comes towards the floor. Tricep stretch. The triceps is the muscle on the back of the um, upper arm. Inhale. Exhale, pull. For three, for two, for one, and release. Let's switch sides. Again, you should really feel that in the shoulder. Yeah. You should feel this in the shoulder. It's a shoulder opener. It brings it into um, external rotation, but also extension. So now we'll go the other way. So we're going to grab... The, now the left elbow comes towards the ceiling. And this one I can't grab. Yeah, and you might, she can't grab it on this side. She can't grab her fingers on this side. So, and, and I'm the same way. I have a right shoulder issue going on, and it's hard for me to, to be able to do that. So you'll find in most people, you might not have the same from side to side. No human body is perfectly symmetrical. We all have different anatomical variances, particularly in the shoulder joint. We've also had injuries, we have the aging process, we have fibrous tissue buildup, maybe you've had surgery, so that can restrict your range of motion. But as you see here, she doesn't have quite the range of motion, but she's using that strap 
to, uh, to, to make up for that. Inhale, left elbow towards the ceiling, right elbow towards the floor for three, for two, for one, and release. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And that is a seated shoulder opener. Namaste. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time. Oh, my shoulders are open now. <laughs>